Hello. Brandon, do we have a template of that table? Yeah, the, I'm 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 working on that right now. Awesome. Yeah. It's uh we have to figure out a better way to put the template. Every time I have to screw all the way down to the end of the document, it takes forever. <laughs> Maybe we should make just a separate document that would yeah. for one copy and paste the whole thing. It's a scroll bar that never ends. Yeah. Oh, turn it down. Okay. You just give me a sec to put this in while we wait for other Alexa, seven timer for eight minutes. All right, I finally reached the end of the document. So give me a sec. All right, there we go. Let me link the meeting notes into the chat. Okay, I'm having issues with Zoom now. <laughs> One second. Um, can someone post the link in the in the chat? The chat doesn't seem to be working for me. Thank you. Thanks, Rain. All right. Um, so please put your name down in attendance. Um, we are looking for scribes. So if you can help scribe today, um, please put, put your name in down in the scribe section. And I believe today it's a working session and we are gonna be talking about the DOD document that Tim started talking about last week. So let me make sure. Um, I had an agenda item I raised the week before that was something that Matt Hamilton, who I see is also at least according to the notes on the call, um, uh, to discuss about sort of potentially making security assessments uh, contain more security audit-like properties. Okay, yeah, let's put it down as well. Yeah, it shouldn't, I hope, be that long of a discussion, but I think we should just kind of start to let that idea percolate and see where, what people think. Okay, I don't see Tim on the call yet, so maybe we can stop with that once we get your check-ins. Oh, who, who's this, by the way? I, I can't see uh, your name on the... Okay, uh, let's start with check-ins. Let's see, no updates. Um, 
Matt, do you have any other other updates besides the agenda item you talked about? No, no, just the agenda item. Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay. Um, also, um, I think we uh, we we missed this last week. So, if you are a new member, um, also, if you want to put new member beside your name in the attendance, and then we can do some introductions as well. Okay, uh, Jefferino, did I pronounce that right? Hey, yeah, that's correct. Cool, um, do you wanna give a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, my name is Jefferino Sequera. Um, currently I'm a senior security analyst at Bishop Box. Um, I do a lot of just kind of Kubernetes assessments and uh, Kubernetes reviews for Fortune 500 companies uh, in this role and um, just coming by to check this out and see if I can help at all. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, Vinay, do you have an update? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. I, I wasn't sure if this was the best way to convey that, but I just wanted to mention that uh, I think as Tim requested, I made a, a few additions to the, uh, the security practices to the DOD document. All right. Thank you. All right. And looks like there's no other check-ins. Um, and thanks, Emily, for signing off for Scribe. Okay, so uh, checking in from work groups, any updates for work group policy or this big, uh, this data working group? Okay, looks like we're all good for that. Um, so let's start with um, the item that Matt brought up on um, kind of providing a security um, audit angle to the security assessment. I don't know whether that's a, a good way to put that. Yeah, um, so just for some for some background, um, I was uh, assigned or vol volunteered for the, uh, the key cloak assessment uh, a little over a week ago. Um, and in, it, my understanding of the you know, six security assessments is that a lot of it is um, reviewing the, the self-assessment and the document that is produced by the authors of you know, the application or whatever the, the working group is looking at, um, and then providing feedback based off of that documentation. Um, I, I personally am a very tactile person, and I like to poke things because I feel like you know, it's, implementation can, can be whatever people think, you know, you know, or sorry, design can be whatever people you know, want it to be, but implementation is where you know, things actually get interesting. Um, in the in the particular case of the assessment that I was on, I set up the application, and within 30 minutes, I found something that really should be fixed, a, a security issue um, that 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 team has has agreed with um, that it should be fixed. So, in saying this, um, I, I I was wondering why why is it that SIG security assessments don't ha there's no you know pr practitioner angle to this nobody actually sets up the application and attempts to, you know, compromise it or identify any security issues. And I understand that that is, you know, a security assessment and that, that, that likely the blocker is bodies and people who are, you know, able to perform those, those competent reviews. Um, but from, from my perspective, if, you know, if we, there was a small group of, you know, volunteers who didn't necessarily do the traditional SIG security, um, uh, assessment process, but instead performed very light, very, you know, just once over review penetration tests of applications or, you know, practicing security assessments. I think that would go a long way in improving the security of, of projects that come through um, SIG security and doesn't require, you know, the formality and the, you know, the otherwise potentially very large time investment of a, a formal penetration test. And so I was wondering, you know, what are, what are the blockers here? Is it, is it just bodies? Is it just people, you know, able to do these reviews? Right. Um, so, so the, the first thing kind of, um, the, the, the first initial thought of this was that uh, the CNCF for projects that reach a eventual stage would end up 
performing a security audit for it. So it was kind of like there would be a bit of overlapping of um, um, tasks that we're doing. Uh, but at the same time, I do see kind of a bit of value in terms of doing a cursory look of it just because it kind of translates to the security posture of the project itself. Right. Um, I, yeah, I, I want to, uh, sorry, go ahead and finish your thought. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's it's hard to tell when people are talking. And yeah. Not. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was just going to say like, it, it definitely like translates to the security posture itself. But um, I, um, I'm just wondering like, what would be, uh, how could we scope it in a way that, you know, um, doesn't become a full blown out there. How do we say, okay, how do we determine this, um, have a process for it that can be easily replicable across different projects? Yeah, go ahead, Justin. Thanks. Um, I was just going to say that um, I think, uh, so in general, I'm in favor of this. Um, I would like to see it be sort of done and provided in a more uniform way. And um, one of the kind of logistical concerns I have is to this point, we haven't really had anybody step up and directly do this. We've had people occasionally do things that are kind of like this. Um, like it's not that we didn't necessarily play with some aspects of the tool or things, but um, it certainly hasn't been universal. It hasn't been uniform. And um, we, I think, would need uh, to have people that are willing to step up and do this for different projects. Um, you know, I, I think it, it is intensely valuable, though. Um, and to kind of like uh, talk a little more about something you said, um, and, and something that, that um, uh, Matt also said, which is that um, by doing this, you get a very different view of kind of reality of a project. And for us to do something like an assessment, it's really important for us to understand not just what the project tells us, but sort of enough to really understand the actual project's scenario and setup. Um, because it's, I think, very easy for a project, if they were malicious, to say they've done certain things. And from an assessment standpoint, we might not check that. And then we may even push the TOC to move in a direction like, hey, audit this part or something like that, feeling we're doing the right thing when really we've just avoided um, like a big problem that the project has because we maybe got the wrong information from the people doing the uh, self-assessment or maybe we just, you know, like overlook something obvious that we didn't see because we weren't looking in the right way. So I'm very much in, in favor of this. If this, um, if we can find a way to do this uh, fairly like uniformly and, and get uh, a cadre of people in. Yeah, I, I'm a bit hesitant on kind of phrasing it that way in terms of saying that, okay, um, we can't necessarily, we have to do kind of due diligence um, based on what they're putting in, in, the, in the assessment because I feel like 80% of the assessment process is based on that. Um, I'm not sure we can really, you know, make that statement and try and validate that statement. Um, I'm wondering whether we can just put it in a way that, you know, we are evaluating. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what exactly the bug was, um, but I'm thinking about it in terms of, is there a way to say, okay, in terms of, can we somehow measure the quality of security design rather than, you know, try and question the validity of the self-assessment um uh, just i mean just just to interject so perhaps this is the more valuable component um and i'm only speaking for myself as a tester although i'm sure that there are a lot of other people who are you know in the same position when i when i look at an app within 30 minutes i can tell whether or not it's garbage 
So uh, it just, you know, if, if, if it's nothing more valuable than that, a lot of times you can get a gut feeling about this might be an area of concern. This, you know, this authentication scheme is, is very roundabout and it, and it you know, it, it, there's, there's too much going on such that it could become a problem. Um, it's, it's very, very easy to, to do that, at least for me, and I'm sure that others are the same way. So I, I don't know, you know, other than just findings, what, what information would be valuable to, to this group and to the assessment process. But I think, you know, d defining that would be good too. So I guess my question is for this information to be made available, um, other things that we can kind of request from the project site to help us evaluate this? Um, um, it, it, I mean, it, personally, no. I mean, I, again, this is just me personally. Like I, in, in the app that I was recently looking at, I had used it before many years ago, so I knew what it was. But if, you know, if I open that, that SIG security document and I watch the, the walkthrough and all of that, and, you know, that's, that's great. And a lot of times I can understand it, but I, a lot, I personally need to poke stuff. The only thing that I, you know, would benefit from as a tester is instructions on how to set up an environment that that works you know just yeah. links to in, installation and setup instructions that's the only thing that i would need from a project so I, I was a bit worried recently, i'm sorry brandon recently yeah. we updated the assessment information um i believe that we updated maybe it's a pending pr um to talk about how uh, assessors or security reviewers have um flexibility to go through the documentation that the project has we don't require it but it does help them get a better understanding about the, what the project is, how it actually functions. This is beyond the actual self-assessment that's submitted. It was my thought when those updates were made that if an individual wanted to do a little bit of poking around, install it on their desktop or on, on a machine to figure out how it works, just if they happen to discover any vulnerabilities, that was entirely their choice if they wanted to do that. I don't think it's something that we just Courage, because if if you're working with a group of individuals doing the security review of a project self-assessment and we find a blatant problem with it, sometimes it's an indicator in the documentation that this isn't written quite right, it reads a little funny, did you actually mean this? And then we dig in a little bit more and find they're doing something securely, for instance. But if there is a tactile way for that information to come to light, I don't think it would necessarily be an issue as that part of the assessment. Uh, just to add to that, uh, this is in reference to the key cloak assessment. And so currently the assessment is in the clarifying question phase in which we're just trying to like see if the doc conforms to the assessment guidelines, all the accessory fields and stuff like that. And after this phase is done, after the clarifying phase is done, you have like an entire week for people to chime in and then actually try the project like Matt did. So I think we have time after the initial dumb question or clarifying question phase to actually go around and poke into the project if somebody would like to do that. So, yeah. uh, and we have, we, have, we have set up like a week to actually do that. So we are not in that stage yet because the project is still working on the, on the self-assessment itself. So once that's done, then uh, definitely folks can go in, try out the project. And then obviously we have a presentation in the later stage. So we can bring up all these issues uh, so we have time to bring this, this stuff up. So just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, my, my worry okay. was around <clears throat> some projects also, which uh, require a more elaborate setup. Um, yeah, th th that, that was why I brought this up. You know, sometimes yeah. you can just install a Helm chart. Sometimes it's, you know, it's configuring a lot of moving parts. It's too, too complicated to, you know, ask a security tester to spend six hours setting up some weird environment. Yeah, or in the case of like Parsec, right? Where oh, I don't have a, I don't have a HSM. <laughs> I I can't really test this because I don't have the necessary hardware. The other thing I want to bring up, and like Matt, this is a great great idea to begin with. It's something that if we had the people to do it, every single one of the assessments that come through, I think everybody would be happy with that, and we would get a lot of great information. The other concern that I have, and any time that I work with a security tester or a security researcher is the mechanism by which they go around and poke at some of these projects or some of these applications is different from others. So back to the point I was mentioning earlier about uniformity, if we were to do an assessment 
event and we had one maybe two maybe like 10 individuals to actually poke around at the application it may not necessarily be consistent between assessments which some projects um, we don't want anybody to think that the security review of project is considered an endorsement for said project that's not how it works it's more of a we did a review this is our process these are the things that we found if we were to start um, claiming that we are also doing a lightweight security audit of the project, that has a little bit more weight to it. And there's no way for us to measure consistency across, across multiple projects. Um, but it's a great idea. If you have recommendations for how we can do that, that would be so, great as well. Yeah, so uh, I guess just to address both of those points, the first point being that different people do things different ways. I mean, I think that's just kind of an, an unsolvable problem. That's the way that everything is, right? So I don't understand why that would apply to this more than people reviewing the written document or anything else. And in regards to people interpreting the results to mean something different because we're doing a poking audit. I mean, personally, when I, when I joined this group, of, you know, I guess a month or so ago, I assumed that was what was going on here. Like when you hear security assessment, that's just what you assume. So I think- right, right. To add that functionality, just it, it, it just it, it makes sense. I think it's filling a deficiency. It's not adding something extra that now we have to explain or worry about. Well, you know, the, let, let me let me jump in. I, I want to make sure that we um, you know cover a bit of the context of like how we got here. Um, you know, so this uh, you know what was a working group that you know became sort of the prototype for the SIGs inside the CNCF, uh, you know, started as a safe working group, secure access for everyone. Um, and you know, then when we landed as SIG, um, I actually pushed real hard to, to have it, uh, you know, get, get rid of the, uh, you know, backronym and, um, you know, move to a single word uh, and we chose security. Um, so like the, uh, community of members here are, are primarily builders and to the technologists supporting, um, the cloud native infrastructure, uh, you know, up until, uh, you know, recently we, we really haven't had any, uh, pen testers or, or professionals that, uh, you know, are, uh, at, at our disposition to, to, uh, build process and, you know, enable things like this. So, um, you know, when we as a SIG uh, take on a responsibility, um, you know, we need to make sure that we, we can, um, you know, continue to staff it, uh, basically, uh, we, you know, with the volunteers that we have. Um, so, you know, if, if we have something that, that an individual is interested in, in doing, um, you know, we'll, we'll look for ways to, to integrate that into existing processes. Um, but, uh, you know, until there's a, a lead, until there's a, a, a contingent of individuals that uh, can do that regularly, um, yeah, I, I share Emily's concern that uh, introducing, um, you know, new features and capabilities of, of what we uh, can do uh, does introduce a bit of a liability. Uh, you know, we, we should call it out when, when uh, it, it's happening. Um, but uh, Matt, I absolutely want to, uh, you know, enable uh, you to explore this. And I'd, I'd love to see us, uh, you know, build a deeper relationship with uh, the testing community uh, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, integrate the, uh, you know, the, the, the whole world of, you know, the security awareness side uh, to those that can, can help us uh, and be partners in the validation of, of what we're asserting. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I guess, again, back to my original question, then, if it's a matter of bodies, it's a matter of people who are able to do the task, what, what is that number? How, how, how many people do we have to have before that could, you know, be considered to become a codified process? My sort of community management standard is, uh, you know, three. Get to N equals three, um, and, you know, that, that gives you enough stability that, that uh, you know, a, a structure can stand on it. Okay. Thank you. And ideally not all from one organization with one, right on. like, you know, right. like yes. one reporter, like, like with the same supervisor above them where something changes and maybe we lose them all. 
Yep, got it. Great clarification, Justin. Thank you. So, so I do think that there's um, possibly a space for this. I'm not sure whether we. I, I know we, we had um, a lot of discussions when we were talking about something called the observer role, in which um, people would say, "Okay, how do I do a security assessment?" And we're like, you know what, you just like observe a few people doing it. Um, but I think that this could be um, part of a, uh, a document where we can write down, okay, here are some ways you can go about doing a security assessment. One of it Can is I... downloading the tool and trying it out. Uh, another part of it is like looking through the repo, identifying issues, seeing what the issues are in the GitHub repository. Um, Matt, would you be opposed to submitting an issue to find out how many members of SIG Security are interested in creating that audit team or that uh, lightweight penetration testing team? Yes, I'm happy to do that. I think that would be a good next step first to see if we have the membership that's capable of supporting that kind of activity and then conferring with those individuals what a process would actually look like incorporated into an assessment. And then when you're done with all of that, kind of reporting back to the group. Yep, sounds good. I also wanted to suggest that, um, you know, I know Justin does a fantastic job of articulating the objectives of the security assessments, but does it, uh, and I don't know if it's already there, does it make sense to have in the security assessment templates uh, the clear objectives, the goals, as well as the non-goals? And, you know, for example, when we did the Harbor review, uh, we brought up, I brought up some of the things, hey, has it gone through all these best security best practices in terms of uh, scanning, vulnerability, risk assessment, all those kinds of things. And I think uh, the response there was, hey, we've already subjected uh, Harbor to a lot of uh, pen testing and here are the results. So we said, yep, that, that makes sense. So we could put call these out as requirements uh, or areas to cover. And if that's not one of the goals for the security assessment, to actually call it out to say that we don't cover these. And, and, and as Dan also mentioned, there's also, also these liability issues. It's not like a thorough or full-fledged pen test security audit, but it's mapping back to best practices, you know, how are you managing your keys when something fails? You know, those are the kind of aspects that we cover, recovery, graceful degradation, all those kinds of things. To so maybe just call out the goals and then also call out the non-goals if that makes sense. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Document. Yeah, for sure. The the when when you get the recommended process by how we could include this, there will be a lot of things, a lot of documentation that needs to be reviewed, updated, and discussed, like the goals for the assessments that we currently have might potentially change in scope. Um, our non-goals listing might increase. The liability statements that we have on the repo will be potentially expanded. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that would go into this that'll have to be considered, but I, I think all of that could potentially wait until we have feasibility to execute and a recommended process to discuss. Does it make sense for me to take a stab at it, Emily, to just start putting together and then uh, uh, we can see where we land and capture all the different uh, impacts and uh, from, a, from a legal perspective, from a liability perspective, just to have it somewhere so that we can discuss and then we can choose as we deem fit. I think that would be good to have, and I would also um, recommend that you engage with Matt on a couple of those things. Because that, as we're yep. finding people across the community that are from different organizations and teams and backgrounds and experiences, the like diversity is great because it brings all those different viewpoints together. So somebody may be thinking about something that we've all missed and they're brand new because they learned this really cool trick. So definitely think getting together with Matt. Um, and if you could link to the parts of the repo where those docs potentially need to be updated, that would be super helpful for when we have to break down that work and do the tickets and the PRs for it. Will do. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay. Um, 
any other comments on this? Um, I'm new and still kind of figuring everything out, but uh, if you need any help with that, I'd be happy to help too. Uh, this is Jeffrey now. So Matt, when you create the ticket, if you could post it in the Slack channel, that way folks that are interested can find it very easily and then comment yep. on the issue so you have a whole listing of everybody that wants to help you. Yep. And sorry, just to be clear, uh, I, I will open a separate ticket to capture the security assessment goals and non-goals, right? I mean, or do we want to, uh, and then we can link the two? I would, I would leave it as a separate ticket, but still link it, because we're probably going to need that stuff anyways. Brandon, what do you think? Yeah, I think there are two kind of different PRs. Um, right. I think that yeah, it probably will ish be an issue and then it will eventually evolve into PR against the the assessment readme. That's what I'm seeing. So yeah, I agree on that. Let's keep it you know, I have a I have a comment in here and I'm wondering um, when we do an assessment, assessment against what? That would be the question that I think most people will have. Um, if you don't have a frame of reference that is common to every assessor under this group, isn't it very difficult and isn't it become almost subjective on the assessment and then how do you maintain the consistency among these different assessments are done by different assessors? So, so they, they're all experts in different things, but there is no one consistent way of doing it unless we put something in front of us, I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond just goals and non-goals. I mean, it's basically saying, okay, well, this is what we are following. Either a standard that in the industry for certain, part, for example, identity management, or for example, vulnerabilities testing or something like that, whatever it might be. And I realize that the liability portion and all those things, but I think the moment we become officially call ourselves a security working group, you have some inherent liability, one or the other. I mean, we are under CNCF and we are presenting that. So, uh, I mean, either we make progress in that way or we don't really matter, right, to the community. I, I don't know that there, there's a lot of like individual points in there that I would sort of push back on. Um, I think that you know, necessarily we are a group of volunteer different people that are going through and looking at extraordinarily diverse um, things that are, are so different from each other. And in many cases, there aren't effective established standards for how to do this. And furthermore, we're not even, you know, we're not claiming to do something like a professional audit. We're giving the TOC some general recommendation and giving some, some general notes about what this group of assessors thought for the project. So in order to do something like what you describe, I think there's a lot of things that are well outside of the control of what this group could possibly do um, that would have to change, in, including figuring out how to standardize a lot of um, like, you know, to, to do something like PCI level standardization across every possible project that would come to the CNTF, which would just be crazy. I, I think it's, it's the space is moving too fast. So we're, we're really, I think, making a, a you know, the, the alternative to us, if we just say, well, we'll just do nothing then, then what we end up with is we end up with the model that we had before where the TOC members a few of them poke and prod in what little spare time they have for the projects that come up and try to form some opinion and then try to convince other TOC members what they think their opinion is based on some, you know, them getting to spend an hour or two, probably I'm guessing in some cases, kicking the tires on these projects. So we're, we're doing a more extensive you know, I, I view it as we're doing something in between those two extremes. We're doing something where um, 
we're getting a much deeper, much more involved engagement um, with the project, but we're not, you know, going and doing a month long um, security audit, uh, digging through the code line by line with a team of, you know, eight to 10 professional security penetration testers. Um, you know, we're, we're striking, I think, um, a reasonable balance so that there is some good, uh, you know, there is a good overall assessment of the project security done um, without, you know, in, it, like, without, um, uh, you know, like, like expecting that uh, the assessors would be perfect and drop everything and have this be their only day job that they would do and be professional security penetration testers. No, I, I don't disagree with that. All I'm saying is that perhaps if we can put down some very high level, somewhat of a scope or maybe some guidelines and we don't do everything, but we do some things. In other words, whatever that something is at a very high level, maybe it's just an architectural issue, maybe it's just philosophical issue or whatever that level that might be that if we don't go to the code assessment, which I believe is obviously is two details and difficult, and I agree with that. Uh, but I think if we say that, okay, well, these are the things that we look at, and this, this is the frame of reference that we're looking against. So there's not an individual subjective assessment because every individual is a different level of expertise, and you can put that against any subject matter, and you can come up with different assessments depending on who is the assessor. And that's not a very, I'm not sure if that is very valuable to the community. Then you're basically attaching it someone's name and saying, okay, well, this is the person that assessed this one. And that, this, these are the assessments. That's what Matt and the rest of the individuals that are interested are going to look at doing is defining what that process looks like and seeing what kind of common things that we should be looking for. Like with anything, there's a, there's a minimum. Like, Whenever we do a self-assessment, or, or whenever we do an assessment on a project, we always expect them to complete the self-assessment. And that outline has a lot of good information from the project to help us review it. I, my expectation would be Matt and company would be putting to something together very similar where they have an outline of the things, the basic things that they're looking for, and then maybe there's a few freebies. And we can always link back to whatever that documentation or process looks like like in each of the assessments, the same way that we link back to what our processes are when we write up the final report for what we're finding. But this is all new and we're not really gonna know about it until the issue gets created, folks comment on it and they start talking about how do we do this? How do we make it work for the community because we are volunteer based and what does that look like? And then we won't know if it actually works or what the community feedback is until we try a lightweight process or a lightweight assessment to include a lightweight audit on a project that's willing to allow us to experiment. But we won't know until we get there. So these are all really good recommendations and I'm sure um, Matt is more than willing to address them and whenever those conversations get started. And you're always welcome to join and comment on that skit to ensure that they have your feedback and your input on how to make this the best that it can be. So one thing I just, I yeah, go for it. Sorry. One thing I wanted to mention real quick too is it. It sounds like you know this isn't really happening um, regularly, and I don't think the goal should be, you know, an audit. Uh, the one thing that that they would need to kind of feel secure, um, but some level, um, you know, thirty minutes, an hour, whatever. Um, some level of just checking things over, testing things, I think would be. Um, beneficial and um, the goal shouldn't be a perfect test but if it uncovers a couple of vulnerabilities I think I think that'd be beneficial and kind of doing its job yeah um, also I, so I, I was thinking about it uh, from a different angle um, 
but also that we need to kind of say that, okay, someone has done due diligence on this project. And I think in past security assessments, uh, the recommendation to the TOC, for example, in Swift and Inspire is that we've looked at this project in terms of how it fits in the ecosystem, but we have not audited the project. And so the recommendation was that because this is such an important project in terms of security and infrastructure, CNCF should do a proper security audit for it. Um, and I'm just wondering whether, is there anything that we can point to kind of like uh, what we do with the CICD pipelines, some kind of batch certification that says that this project has gone through some level of security audit. And you know, if they haven't done the security audit, then uh, we could may like if if Matt and others have formed like a quorum of people that uh, have the expertise, then we can have it as kind of what we offer as a SIG as well. Like I like that idea. Yeah. Um, I'm not familiar with that, so I'm not sure what certifications there are out there today. Um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the issue. I think it should be a good discussion there. Okay. Um, just want to check in, is Tim around or anyone that wants to represent the DOD document? He pinged me on Slack yesterday saying that he wants us to talk about it. So I just want to make sure we have time for that. So Tim, it looks like he's not around, but uh, probably uh, in maybe if I dare uh, to take a spot and maybe just present uh, that document. Does that make sense? And talk about some of the additions I personally made, for example, on how I interpreted the document. Yeah, definitely. Go for it. Just give me a second. <clears throat> Can you all see the DOD for CNCF uh, spreadsheet? Yep. Hello? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the way I interpreted this is I think uh, there, there is a wh whole bunch of categories that have been defined in this, uh, in this tab where, you know, uh, you know, belongs in Kubernetes TIG uh, and then they controls meets NIST requirements for a Kubernetes TIG. Uh, and then belongs in a vendor specific Docker, OpenShift, Linux, container hardening, belongs in a container platform. And I think this is actually a, quite a, a comprehensive uh, list of controls uh, that has been put together. And, and, uh, and it's, 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 a, it's a great start from our work in progress. And obviously there are so many different facets, but you know, I think it talks about all the different uh, best practices, right? Uh, one of the things that I think about, I, I believe it's the NIST uh, 800-170, which is the container compliance. So if I think about that, a lot of the controls that have been talked about in that uh, NIST standard has been uh, talked about here. So it's a really good start for any kind of, uh, let's say in this particular case, it's the Department of Defense, but an operator to be aware of as they deploy their applications and their cluster. So it's nothing out of the ordinary, but you know, just a whole bunch of best practices controls that need to be uh, addressed. So I, I'm, I'm not doing justice to the full intent of this. I, I must uh, mention that. But the way I uh, can think of as how this can be consumed is for, let's say, the DOD to put together uh, some kind of a, 
a reference framework on the controls that need to be enabled across all their, uh, you know, for their containerized applications. And I, I don't want to go through all of them, but, you know, there are different categories, if you will, some so quick question be before we dive into this. I noticed that there's a the stick, um, the the different aspects of it, for example, like limit the number of processes. Um, they seem to be pretty generic, but then there's this column that says vendor. What does that mean? You know, I'm really not sure. I think uh, they have, uh, how do that you say one. they have? Sure, go ahead. That column is the vendor that provided the recommendation. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. I think I think they've done like a you know a request for comments, if you will, or something like that. And then so the vendors that have actually provided the, the those recommendations. All right. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and uh, so there is some kind of uh, classification in terms of how the uh, you know mandatory recommendations. What is the severity based on? Uh, non applying these not applying these controls if you will and i'm sure a lot of these are very very familiar to a lot of us and really really bringing together a lot of the you know uh, maybe the layered approach in terms of system capabilities right you know you can use a lot of the uh, uh, seccomp uh, rules can you use a lot of the linux capabilities how should you be configured uh, how should you be handling uh, secrets at rest and, and there is a whole bunch of uh, similarities that I draw from the from the comments here in terms of how we actually uh, perform our security assessments, for example. So secrets and management, secret management is a huge uh, uh, dimension that we think about when we do our security assessments for a lot of these projects in itself. Logging, auditing, um, you know, uh, runtime security, uh, uh, security for different types of components, for example, the etcd, uh, encryption at rest, um, and uh, remote logging, etc. And so there's been a lot of focus and on the orchestration platform. Uh, and then there's a lot of Kubernetes specific stuff. There's some open shifts kind of stuff. And then what I went and added, and there's some references to how to interpret the CapNet draw. So there are some places where explicit capabilities have been called out. There are some places where they have been clubbed into a bigger bucket, if you will and uh, you know how to handle namespaces etc and uh, given that i can talk to some i just want to highlight some of the stuff that i added from my perspective which was you know there was not enough emphasis on um, you know the shift left aspect and the ability to actually incorporate those best practices so i added this you know the ability to do vulnerability scanning file integrity runtime security file integrity monitoring malware scanning the need for network visibility network protection and you know scanning kubernetes manifests uh, and i'm hoping that a lot of these things can also go back into some of the points that matt brought up to say uh, you know when you deploy a lot when let's talk about the kubernetes, kubernetes manifest and there are a whole bunch of things that can be scanned and called out even prior to those actually being deployed so i called some of those out so uh, that's as far as i dare to go with uh, describing uh, the intent for this document <laughs> Um, thanks, Tune. Uh, I think that's a that's a comment from Mark and Chad about um, it would be nice if it could be somehow mapped since a lot of these is, um, are stemmed from a lot of NIST guidelines, right? Right, right. In terms of, uh, maybe because it is coming from a lot of those different standards, otherwise there'll be duplication and, and we lose the context. I agree. I can take a note to... Uh, uh, try to maybe call that out somewhere. Is this based, um, you say it was based on 800, 190. Um, does that, are you familiar uh, with the that covers application or just kind of platform? It looks like a lot of these are platform specific. These are, these are very much uh, uh, platform and uh, I, I can't come into that at the top of my head. I have gone through the entire uh, standard, but uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. This and is this interesting. Is, and uh, yeah, you this, guys have a Slack channel also, right? Exactly. I was just going to call, call out anybody okay. who wants to contribute, please. Uh, there is a Slack channel. 
So all should we be adding directly to the requesting access to the doc and, and adding things to it? Or I clicked on the link, I don't have access. I just put in the request for it or commenting in the, um, in the Slack channel or what's kind of the call to action? What should we, what do you, what should we be doing to contribute? So from what I gather, clearly I'm not the owner of this. I just want to make that very clear, but I'm also similar to you guys as a contributor, but the, uh, I would recommend getting on that Slack channel and then uh, maybe requesting access from Tim and, uh, and then just uh, starting to add your recommendations and maybe provide the attribution so that it can you know, appropriately be followed up and uh, handled. So there is an issue that you can go to for more information. It's issue number 391. I have it linked in the agenda. The ask from uh, Tim specifically is review of the documentation, the Excel documents that they have, determine if the recommendations there are sound on point, if there's anything missing, but potentially be tweaked. So that, that was the minimum ask, but there's a little bit more to it than just that. They're looking for like the entire soup to nuts and and what is an appropriate SIG for a fully cloud native Kubernetes based deployment of any of their applications, which that's the bigger ask. So I would recommend if you have comments associated with that, reach out to them directly. Um, but for the purposes of issue 391 and that Excel document, um, use of the Slack channel and the ticket would be great. Vinay, thank you for putting on your vendor hat and, uh, you know, uh, pushing that forward. I uh, really love, you know, getting some contributions there. Um, as you went through that, is there anything that you were like, uh, you know, mm, it'd be great to take this from the vendor level and, uh, you know, sort of extract it out and uh, build consensus uh, so we can, you know, potentially go forward with um, a, a SIG level recommendation? Absolutely. There is a, 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 there is a plethora of very, very uh, interesting and important uh, aspects that we could take out of that. And we have a product agnostic SIG level recommendation. Absolutely. Right on. I think that would be fantastic, uh, and, and something that uh, uh, is, you know, really the spirit of what you know Tim was hoping for in the long run is, you know, to, to build that, that the broader participation. Um, I don't know what the best way to to get that started. Uh, you know, just continue working through an issue, or um, you know, is this something that we want to to uh, integrate into sort of a a presentation? Um, or document somehow. My sense is I think a document would be a great first start so that we can all okay. collaborate, just bring, bring our ideas together and figure out how we can put it to a format that we can uh, put, put out there for external consumption. Yeah, so if you have some cycles to, to pull some of those items out and, and kick off a document, um, that would be amazing. Sure. Uh, I think the that. document would be a great first step. Um, Vinay, I could, I could absolutely help you there. I've written some stuff very similar to that for SUSE, um, which a lot of it is very general anyways, so it can certainly work here as well. Thanks a lot, Cameron. We'll definitely ping you. Okay. So did I hear that this list is available to the public for making contribution? or comments or anything, or is it limited to a specific, few specific vendors? Not at all. I think, uh, and once again, speaking for Tim, uh, <laughs> is uh, he, he, there is a Slack group, and I believe there is also, uh, to Emily's point, there is a, a issue, 391, and then the document is linked there. So I'm not sure about who has access, but if you click there, if you have access, I would imagine you're free to comment on it. Okay. Just is, is right, at least by default, the document is not viewable unless you request access. So you have to click on it and then click on the request access button. Underwood here. I was going to suggest that when we have a document that we're sort of halfway okay with, then we could invite one of the reps from SEI to one of our meetings uh, because they have, they're actually paid by DOD to 
uh, to monitor the work in this. And, you know, I don't know if that would be formal, but it would be a way for us to really, I think, deliver uh, something tangible, and then they can decide if they want something formal with CNCF. Is that a contact that you can provide? Yeah, it's Hassan Yassar, and it's somebody that Tim knows as well. Okay, great. Okay. But I, I agree, if we have something to show, it's always better, right? Yep. I'll, I'll start putting together and maybe uh, I don't want to be overly optimistic, but maybe in a couple of weeks, hopefully we can have maybe a first version to review. Sounds great. And you, when you uh, submit the ticket for that, so you're tracking that, would you post it in the Slack channel for others to be able to- Yeah, I, I, put it, I put it in, um, oh, do you mean the Slack channel? For the for the work that okay yeah let me update the the announce the the header to include a link to the Slack channel in the main six security channel as well. Yep, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. If not, I think we're almost out of time. Um, so I guess we'll see everyone next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.